Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss the 1990 version of Total Recall, starring Otto Schwarzenegger, as well as Ronnie Cox, Rachel Ticketon, excuse me, Michael Ironside, and Sharon Stone, directed by Paul Verhoeven. Now I've heard of me doing things under directors' names, but a writer of a short story is kind of an interesting topic for me as this is based on a short story by Philip K. Dick and yes I have reviewed the other two Blade Runner films as well as Minority Report when I did the Ready Player One show for Minority Report and and when I led up to 2049 for Blade Runner so let's and I have seen this movie before I just don't remember how it turns out. Let's get into the movie and we'll see. <clears throat> Here we go. We start on a couple of astronauts in Mars as it was a dream of Douglas Quaid, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, as he wakes up next to his wife, Lori, played by Sharon Stone, who's jealous of a brunette in his dream, which seems kind of silly, but I like Arnold in this movie as he's just a reg like a regular guy who wants to move to Mars as Sharon... And Sharon Stone is attractive in this movie, and they just moved into a city that seems like New York. And he seems, and he sees a commercial of Recall, which is a place where it can change the person's life with new memories. And it makes perfect sense how the movie describes it. Doug gets an appointment with Recall in an office ran by McLean, who talks Doug into getting into Recall. As Doug doesn't seem thrilled about it at first until he becomes a secret agent from Recall, and does it, and does it, and as he gets a Recall, he falls asleep, and as he wakes up, he goes on a rampage, believing his name is Quaid, and they get him out in a taxi cab driven by a robot and bumps into his co-worker Harry, as he and his goons capture Doug, and Doug kicks their asses. And doesn't realize he's a badass. And like I, and I like how simple this first thirty minutes of this movie is, as Laurie is shooting at him. And yes, I said his wife Lori, as she's a secret agent at trying to kill Doug at, as their marriage is implanted in by her agency, and they come by the house with her bosses led by Richter, played by Michael Ironside coming from the lobby to get Doug, and he escapes, and it was kind of funny when Doug goes through a scanner without realizing he's being detected, and they have a chase sequence with a gun that ends up with a man who kept getting shot quite a few times, and they shot the hell out of that guy as Doug escapes by train, and the action works very well for the 1990s. Richter gets a call by his boss, Co Cohagen, played by Ronnie Cox, as they find Doug in a galleria, and he hides there as Doug gets a call from a mystery man and gets a briefcase and runs for his life and rips a taxi cab driver a new one as it is a robot, so it makes sense as the movie looks pretty good, pretty, and the writing is corny, sure, but when I get to that remake, it's much worse acting, but Arnold pulls off the lines very well, like all one I'll bring up in a second. Doug calls himself and learns he's not really Doug. He's really someone by the name of Hauser and pulls a bag out of his pulls a bug out of his skull and says the best line in the whole movie, "Get your ass to Mars." And Richter and his team try to shoot him, but hits rats instead. And the line, get your ass to Mars, is very quotable from this movie, as Arnold says it the best way possible. Doug disguises himself as a woman robot, as Richter passes by the woman without realizing it's Doug until the woman overreacts. And that is a robotic, was pretty damn neat, as when Doug passes her them... As when Doug passes them her head, it explodes, which is the funniest way to have a mask explode. And Doug once again escapes and takes a train to Mars to a pyramid in happen that happens to be an agency where he worked at in Mars. And Richter sees Cohagen as he's upset about Richter who's from losing Doug while he's fighting a war against some rebels in Mars. 
which is a good plot for not only the short story by Philip K. Dick, but in this movie. And I gotta be honest, I never read that short story, but I think I will after this movie. Doug stops by Hilton Hotel and checks into his suite and gets a note from Last Resort and says, for a good time, ask for Melina. As Doug goes to the Last Resort to find Melina, played by Rachel Tickleton, and finds a woman with three boobies, which is an awesome design for this movie, not, not that I'm a pervert or anything like that by any means. And Melina goes to Doug and takes him to her room and learns Doug, whose real name is Hauser, like I said before. And he worked for Cohagen, and all of this is making connecting sense. And the movie is has some imagination that director Paul Verhoeven is working with very well, in my opinion. Same director as the original RoboCop. Doug gets a visit by a doctor from Recall as he tells him not to not to shoot him at the hotel, but he calls bullshit on that as Lori comes in and tells him she loves him, and he also calls bullshit on that as well. And believe it or not, so do I, and the doctor tells Doug to swallow a pill that'll take him back to recall, but he doesn't and almost gets almost captured by Melina until Melina comes in and saves Doug's life, and Doug shoots Lori in the head and says, consider that a divorce and that they get a hell out of there and they get the hell out of there and Richter gives them a chase scene of their lives as which is a hell of a lot of fun and it was a kick-ass action scene and the way it was filmed was well done while Tony hides Doug and Molina and the nameless cab driver Richter shoots the three bastard breasted women excuse me and shoots up Tony's strip bar, and I am having myself an enjoyable time watching this movie, and with the characters, as they work rather well, the elusive Samir and the people on Mars will die, while Doug and Melina go to Tony's contracts, contacts, excuse me, and we learn the nameless cab driver is some kind of alien, and they take Doug and Qua to Quato, and Quato comes to the nameless contact and tells Doug to open his mind, and shows Quato what he has seen, and the bad guys found Quato and Doug with some big ass trucks and it was some drills. And the nameless cab driver betrays Doug and Molina before they go to the outside of Mars. And Richter takes Doug and Cohagen, as he calls Doug a hero, because he's wiped out the resistance. And he, as Hauser, is the traitor and working for Cohagen all the fucking time. As that was kind of a mind fuck I didn't see coming. And that mystery of a mind fuck did fuck with me at this point. While the people on Mars are dying and Cohagen doesn't give a fuck. And Doug and Molina escape recall and the action when that scene was badass. Cohagen makes the decision of killing Doug while killing his fish. And I thought, what the fuck did the fish do to deserve that kind of death? While Doug goes to the reactor and Molina and they bump into the nameless cab driver in Trader as he tries to kill them but runs out of oil and Doug kills the Trader and they find a way to get to the reactor and as they go there Richter and his team try to find Doug and Molina as they do find Doug as a holograph. The real Doug and Molina shoots off the bad guys to death and I did laugh at the line when he laughs and says you think this is the way of real Quaid it is and shoots the bastards up just cracked me up Doug and Richter fight until Richter loses his arms which did feel like the 1990s as far as losing his hands goes and it how it looks and Doug gets the reactor and encounters Cohagen as he tries to turn off turn on the reactor but eventually Molina shoots Cohagen, and they turn on the reactor and air blows while they hang on tightly and Doug makes Cohagen die and burn in hell on Mars. And Doug turns on the air and lets go with Molina as they get to Mars themselves and as they blow up with their eyeballs popping out of their heads and everybody in Mars lives thanks to Doug and Molina and the climax is a hell of a lot of fun just like Doug and Molina surviving this whole movie. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.3 out of 10. 
I do like the characters as I had a fun time watching this movie as with some badass action sequences. The cinematography was well done as director Paul Verhoeven does a great job on this movie as it feels very 1990s and the effects sort of hold up in my opinion. There were some badass scenes I enjoyed with the action in this movie. It's a great time to watch. So yeah, if you saw the remake and haven't seen this one, you don't know what you're missing as far as good filmmaking goes. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And next time we'll be back with Screamers. And until next time, get your ass to Mars.